What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another live stream from the Scalar Learning Channel. And we are doing something that is really cool today. We are finally reviewing, after many, many people have asked, we're finally reviewing the October 2021 SAT. And this is a special SAT because I actually took the official one, so that's pretty cool. The only downside is it's not you're not going to be seeing me take a real first attempt here, right? Which is what I do like to do generally with these with these new SATs. But hey, it's pretty cool. I got to sit down and take this for real. So it was a pretty fun experience. If you didn't see my score reveal video, you can check it out uh, on YouTube. Just search, you know, who's a for scalar learning score reveal. You can see I got a perfect score on it. Um, and it, it was pretty interesting. Taking the SAT school day, any advice? Because I'm not good at math. Yeah, first advice is watch this channel and prepare and do as much practice as, as humanly possible. And thinking you're quote unquote not good at math, that's not a real thing. That's just a skill you haven't acquired yet. What's up, Robert? Yeah, so the experimental, I'm not sure. I, I don't think I'm even supposed to really talk about it because it's not released. So all I can tell you is it was it was difficult. Uh, more difficult than the regular regular section, so I don't want to betray the you know whatever in, in terms of that that type of content. Now this content here, obviously, this is released publicly, so I know this is all good, and that is why we're gonna do this one. Do you have a study guide I can follow? Yeah, I've got a video that will walk you through how to study for the SAT math section. Um, and let me see. And by the way, I got a video course now that's up on as well that you can check out below. It's a monthly subscription and probably I think a really good deal. We've got our own practice tests up there and personalized video explanations for every question. So if you are looking to study, that would be a great thing to do. We're gonna we're continuing to add on to it, make it better and better. So here, there's that and then I'll show you the video that I'm talking about and then I gotta get started right away. Study for SAT math. Um, yeah, here it is, comes up pretty quickly. So you can check this out as well. I'll put it in the chat for people who are interested. Boom, what's up, Chris? Okay, so there it is. Dima, what's up? Okay, and uh, you got 1110, made some student dinks, no, okay. Let's do this thing. This is the no calculator section, so no calculator, but we do have a timer in the mix, so I'm gonna get that going. And we got 25 minutes on the clock as per usual. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start in, wait, this is like huge, hold on, why is the marker so big? All right, yeah, that's good enough. We're going to start in three, two, one, let's do it. What is the solution to the given equation above? So we're going to combine like terms. So we got 5K equals 5, divide both sides by 5, divide both sides by 5, boom. K equals 1 for the win, done. Number two, which what is the graph of the equation Y equals 3 to the X? This is kind of interesting. So look, we know it's exponential. We know it's got to go up. We know it's not going to go below 0. So B is out. And these two are ridiculous. Like why are they going down like that? So those are out as well. And that means A is the winner. If you're a little unsure and you're like, I don't know, plug in some values. 3 to the 0 is 1. That's that point right there. 3 to the 1 is 3. That's that point right there, et cetera, et cetera. 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third. Looks pretty good. We're happy. Moving on. 3. For the quadratic function F, the table below shows some values of X and their corresponding values of F of X. Which of the following could be the graph of Y equals F of X? So we have three points. We have negative one, zero. Remember f of x is the y value. So negative one, zero. We've got zero, negative four, which would be right here. And we got one, zero, which is right here. That means a is our winner. We just, we just figured it out. We just proved it. This one has at zero, it has positive four. This one at zero, it does have negative four, but it doesn't have those x intercepts. And this has no x intercepts as well. A is the winner. Done. Four. In the given quadratic function, f, c is a constant, and f of 2 is 12. What is the value of c? So first thing, this is a great opportunity to do some plug and chug. It's saying when the x value is 2, the function value is 12. So I'll rewrite it as 12 equals 3 times, replacing the x with 2 plus 4 times 2 minus c. And what are we going to do here? If we solve and isolate c, we're going to know what c is. So 12 equals 4 times 3 is 12 plus 8 minus c. Then we're going to combine like terms. 12 equals 20 minus C. Negative C equals subtract 20 from both sides. Negative 8, which means C equals 8 for the win. A, done. 5. 
All right. A person used a total of 265 calories while walking and running on a treadmill. Running at a constant rate required 11.5 kilocalories per minute. And walking at a constant rate required 3.5 per minute. So there's those two, two values. <clears throat> so X is, looks like it's running and Y, it looks like it's walking. All right, great. The relationship between the number of minutes running X, yeah, there we go, and the number of minutes walking Y is given by the equation shown. If this person ran for 20 minutes, how many minutes did this person walk? Plug and chug, right? Plug 20 in for X. So 20 times 11.5 plus 3.5 Y equals 265. Guess what? I got an equation. Now I, all I got to do is solve. So I'm going to do this mentally, not that I'm saying you should, but I'm going to do it like this. 2 times 11.5 is 23, and then add a 0. So we got 230 plus 3.5y equals 265. Subtract 230 from both sides. We get 3.5y equals 265 minus 230 is 35. Divide both sides by 3.5. You can do that mentally. It is 10d for the win. Done. Number 6. Which of the following is equivalent to the expressiones? So what I'm going to do is I got 6 over x divided by 18. So I'm going to rewrite this first like this. Then I'm going to use keep change flip 6 over x times the reciprocal of 18, which is 1 over 18. Cross simplify 3, 1, right? Divide both by 6. And then I end up with 1 times 1 is 1. x times 3 is 3x. B for the win, done. Now, if you're like, man, I'm not sure about that. This is a little confusing. Can't remember, keep, change, flip, whatever. You can do a little plug and chug, right? We know, let's choose a value for X. Let's say it's two. So if I plug in two, I'd have six over two over 18. Six over two is three, which would be three eighteenths or one sixth. Now, if I plug in two into this correct solution, I'd also get one sixth. Here I get three halves, here I get something crazy, and here I'd get uh, one, uh, oh, actually, okay, so we're actually getting a, a false hit here. So I get one sixth. So the, actually, this is a great thing that this happened. So if you plug in two, you're like, wait a minute, I get between B and D. Okay, now choose another example. So now let's try like three. Six over three is two over 18, which is one ninth. Six, um, what was it, three? Three over 12 is one fourth. So you only get the correct answer here as one ninth, and now it's verified. Seven, in the figure shown, C is the center of a circle and AB is tangent to the circle at A. Which of the following is true about the measure of angle BAC? Okay, I'm going to tell you something right now. This is a radius, and that's a tangent line. Whenever a radius and a tangent to a circle intersect, they form a right angle. So that's it. Me the measure is exactly equal to 90 degrees. No questions. Number eight, the graph of the function, if f is shown, what is the value of x for f of x equals zero? Basically, we're trying to find the value of x when this function is zero, aka when it intersects the x-axis. That's when the function value or the y value is zero. And it intersects it at x equals three. That would be option D, done. Nine, the equation shown gives a in terms of p, r, and t, where p and r are not equal to zero, <clears throat> which equation gives t in terms of a. Okay, this is just isolating quantity, so I just ignore this, and we're trying to isolate t in every instance. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by p, a over p equals rt plus 1. Then I'm going to subtract both sides by 1. a over p minus 1 equals rt. Last but not least, divide everything by r. So divide this whole side by r, divide this whole side by r. Now, I know this doesn't look great, but the cool thing is, is when you divide a over p by r, it's just like that r just gets thrown onto that denominator. So it's a over p r minus, and I'll separate them out, minus 1 over r. They're going to have different denominators equals t. And this is pretty much how they have presented it in the answer choices. And you can manipulate these and play around with them until you get what you think is equivalent to one of these. And you can also do that same trick where you plug in some values to verify if you've got the time. So A over PR minus one over R uh, is that one. And I'm just gonna double check for a second. So let's see, how can we verify this? Uh, let me just do it one more time in my head. So A over P minus one, and then we divide both by R, do, 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 do. Yeah, that's good. All right, let's see. Number 10, what is the volume in cubic units of the right triangular prism? So any prism, Okay, all you're going to do is you're going to calculate the area of the face that sort of gets reflected back, right? So there's the face, and then it gets 
extended back, I should say, by that length. So check this out. What's the area of this triangle? Six times six, which is 36. Then you take half of that is 18. And then this length is 10. So you do 18 times 10, 180, boom, done. 11. A hotel has a total of 180 rooms, and on a certain day, half of the rooms were cleaned. So that's 90. There were nine housekeepers on duty at the hotel that day, and each housekeeper cleaned the same amount of rooms R. Well, you already tell R is supposed to be 10, right? There's 90 rooms, nine housekeepers is 10. Which of the following equations represents the information given in terms of R? Okay, let's see. So, do, 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 do. so nine housekeepers, it's a little bit strange. So here's the deal. Actually, we know already that R is 10. So I can just plug in 10 to each of these equations and see which one gives me a true value. Here I get half of 19 equals 180, that makes no sense. Here I get two times 19 equals 180, that makes no sense. Here I'd get nine, half of 90 is 45, is not 180. It's gotta be this one. And I guess if we were to divide both sides by two, we'd get 9R equals 90. That's kind of how we knew R was 10. So A is the only one that makes sense, and we're done. 12. A patio is to be made using square, using square paving stones that are all the same size. There will be no gaps between the paving stones, and they will not overlap. Okay, let's just do a little square in the mix to represent whatever is happening here. And... The line x y plane represents the relation between the area y. I don't know why this isn't labeled, so I'm going to label But I do remember that it wasn't labeled on the test. And the number of paving stones. So this is number of stones. <clears throat> so the top surface of each paving stone is a square with the length of k feet. Do, 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 do. What is the value of k? All right. So check this out. I know that two stones have an area of eight. That means one stone has an area of four. So the only way we can get an area of four is for k, since it's a square, k has to be two. Two times two is four. Um, we can verify that here, because again, yeah, if each thing has an area of four, four times four is 16. So it's gotta be a two by two square, and that's it. 13. Line L is shown in the xy plane. Let me move it up a little bit. Line L is shown in the xy plane, which the following is an equation for line L. Oh, nice. So let's just do like this. Y equals mx plus b. So my y-intercept is 1, 2 is 2. And my slope is obviously negative. I'm going down 2 over 5. It's negative 2 fifths x. But they don't have it in slope-intercept form. They have it in standard form. So i got to add the 2 fifths x to this side and then last but not least i don't with standard form which is what they did here you don't have any fraction coefficients so i can get rid of this fraction coefficient by multiplying everything by five boom boom five times two fifths is two five times y is five y and five times two is ten so it's two x plus five y equals ten d for the win done uh, 14. In the system of equations above, n is a constant. If the system has no soluciones, what is the value of n? What does that mean, no, no solution? It means that the lines have to be parallel, a.k.a. they have to have the same slope. What I like to do in these situations is immediately I'm going to get this into slope-intercept form to find the slope. There's a shortcut, but I, I like to do it old-fashioned way. It doesn't take that much time. So I'm going to subtract 12x from both sides. Whoops subtract 12x from both sides, so that's negative 12x, and then divide by negative 6, divide by negative 6, boom, and I get y equals 2x plus 0, so the slope is 2. So to have no solution, this slope has to be 2 as well. So let's say 3y, again, put it in slope-intercept form, equals negative nx plus 1, divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3, and now I know the slope of this is negative n over 3. So we need negative n over 3 to equal 2. Multiply both sides by negative 3. Boom. Cancel out the negative, and n equals negative 6 right there. Boom, done. Now, uh, we plug it back in just to make sure negative 6x plus 3y equals 1. And that makes sense. Again, 
you'd have 3y equals 6x plus 1. Divide by 3, you get a slope of 2, so we feel confident there. 15. Which of the following is equivalent to this? All right. First, we take the square root of 16. That's 4, so that comes on the outside. What's the square root of a to the 16? Now, you may be tempted to be like, oh, it's a to the 4th, square root of 16, right? But that's not what you do here. You want to think what times itself equals a to the 16. That is a to the 8th, right? a to the 8th times a to the 8th is a to the 16th because of these exponent rules. We add the exponents. So the square root of that is actually a to the 8th. So that means B is the answer done. Let's go to the free response. We've got 12 minutes to spare, which is terrific. The graph of Y equals 3 fifths X minus 8 in the XY plane is a line. I believe that's a minus sign. It's a little weird, but um, it doesn't matter. What is the slope of this line? Perfect. It's in slope intercept form. 3 fifths is the winner. Done. The solution to the given system of equations is XY. What is the value of X? Alrighty, I'm going to use elimination, I guess. So I'm going to multiply the top by 3, and I'm going to multiply the bottom by 2. This will eliminate the y's. So I'll get 6x plus, or sorry, 9x, my bad. 9x plus 6y equals 24. And on the bottom, I get 8x minus 6y. That's beautiful because we want those to be opposites, but the same coefficient, but opposite signs equals 10. Now let's add it all together. Cancel. We get 17x equals 24 plus 10 is 34. Divide by 17. Divide by 17. We get a nice whole number, which is 2 for the win. Done. Now we go to 18. In right triangle x, y, z, sine of x equals cosine of 20. Uh, oh, I don't really even need this, but that's it's okay. What is the measure in degrees of angle x? So here's the deal. Let's say this is 20. Okay, in a right triangle, this has to be 70. Um, a, B, C. I'm just going to explain it like this. Sine of X, or sorry, cosine of X is adjacent over hypotenuse, A over C. They're saying sine of what angle is equal to A over C? Well, it's sine of 70 because sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that means the answer is 70. But there's a shortcut. And I mentioned this in many of my videos, especially the SAT Math Formula Bible, which you should definitely check out. That's uh, a relatively recent video, but super important. Remember, cosine of an angle equals sine of the complement of that angle. What's the complement of 20, a.k.a. what plus 20 is 90, 70? So you can do that one almost instantly if you remember that. What is the sum to the solutions of the given equation? All right, let's solve by bifurcation. We split this into two equations. X minus 2 equals 3, and X minus 2 equals negative 3. Add 2 to both sides. 2 plus 3 is 5. Add 2 to both sides. 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1. What is the sum of 5 and negative 1? It is 4. Boom. Done. And finally, number 20, we got this. In the given equation, b is a positive constant. The sum of the solutions of the equation is 5. What is the value of b? All right. So, got it. Okay, so the solutions are everything at value of x that's going to make this equal to 0. Well, for this one, it's 0, right? Because if you plug in 0, it zeroes out. For this guy, it's negative 3. And for this one, it's b, right? Because if I plug b in, it zeroes out. And guess what? I just wrote out the three solutions. I added them up, and it says the sum of these solutions is equal to, or is, is is basically equal, right? Five. Now I got a nice equation. Negative three plus b is five. All we got to do is isolate, add three to both sides. Boom. B equals eight for the win, and done. And we got nine minutes to spare, so that's tons of time. Obviously, this is... Uh, one that I've done before, so I was probably able to go even faster than normal. But that's it. And, yeah, I'm not going to check the answers because I'm pretty darn sure those are all right because um, that meshes with everything that I answered for real. But I'll see the comments, and let's see what we got here. Uh, and by the way, first of all, thank you guys. Look, I know you guys give me these likes. Uh, a lot of you have given me the likes even before I start recording or doing anything. So I feel like that's such a vote of confidence. I really appreciate that. By the way, those likes, that engagement helps the channel tremendously. And we just passed 40,000 subscribers not too long ago. It is incredible. It is amazing. And we're spreading the word across the planet, everywhere. I'm hearing from people from Ghana and all over. We're letting people know that you can be anywhere and you can be on YouTube and do amazing on this test. You have the ability. That's 
this platform, YouTube, this channel is part of that equalizing factor. We're, we're changing the game, changing the landscape of test prep, and it's incredible. So thank you for helping me be a part of that. And thank you for being a part of that as well. Uh, Dima, did I, did you email me and did I not respond to your email? If, if so, I'm going to double check right now. I, cause I re recognize your name. I thought I did respond to your email and I'm so sorry if I didn't. So let me, let me go back and check right now. The international, I don't believe the international was released. If it is, I will. If it's not, I can't, um, for number 19, why did you do three and negative three? Anytime you're solving absolute value, you got to remember inside the absolute value, you can have three, which obviously would equal three, or negative three, because the absolute value of negative three is still positive three. So that's, you have to, there's gonna be also always a split. There's gonna be two possible answers. Um, so uh, somebody's asking if you think these are a little bit simple. I think the no calculator was on the easier side. I'm not gonna, you know, that, that's probably the case, but here's the dealio. The calculator section I felt like was tougher. So I do feel like overall, and there were some weird questions here. Like this one was a bit new, okay? I haven't seen that that really before. This one was not super typical. So they're mixing it up a little bit, you know what I mean? And it's just important to pay attention to these <clears throat> slight modifications, slight trends as the SAT evolves, as it should evolve, right? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much. And by the way, if you haven't checked out our SAT course, we're still building it. So that's why the price is still low and it's still a work in progress, but it's going to be so incredible. You can check it out. Uh, you can at least just sign up even if you don't purchase it right away. And we're going to be offering some amazing deals come uh, uh, Thanksgiving and Black Friday. So be on, be on the lookout for that. That's only a, a few weeks away. And so you can just sign up, enter your email and you'll be on all those announcements as well. But we got a brand new practice questions. So three practice tests up right now and personalized video explanations for each question. So this is gonna be, it's gonna be sick when it's even done. But even right now, it's already sick. Uh, also join our Discord community. It's totally free and you can meet all these other amazing students who are trying to prepare for these tests. We have just an incredible, encouraging, supportive community. So definitely do that. And we will be doing no calculator tomorrow, uh, TBD in terms of the actual time, but I'll post that shortly. Thank you guys so much for joining and I will see you in the next video. Take it easy.